I'm one of those people that if I'm going to do things, I don't do them by half. Hey guys, so I've actually managed to get some of the files together from last night's episode. So this has been a bit of a labour of love. So I really hope you enjoy it. We're going to be chatting to John about his prolapse. Finally, hit the like button. Hit that little bell icon because we're going to be uploading quite regularly and it'd be nice for you to get a little buzz in your pocket whenever we upload. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's get into this episode. Over the last 12 months, what's been going on? So October, I think we spoke about this before, we? but October 22nd, two days after my birthday, I had the J pouch taken down and the anus closed. Then uh, given a permanent ileostomy and that was purely because the J pouch failed to work. Then early December time I got a intestinal blockage which then caused a prolapse because of being sick. So March was laparoscopic surgery that the surgeon decided to do to be less invasive. Obviously cut away the prolapse doma which was quite excessive if I'm being honest. It was, it was hanging out quite a lot. Took that away, got it back to where it should be and I think it was probably about three to four weeks later sitting back into the uh, military rehab environment. Feeling good from the surgery I felt like I was ready to go. The storm was in right shape and it was functioning well. The, the scarring had healed, ready to go. Well, I thought it was ready to go. So I came back into rehab, started very slow, and then um, got to a point where probably another two to three weeks later, five, six weeks after the surgery. What um, stuff were you doing then? We were doing some low level kind of co activity stuff, so maybe some dead bugs, you know, lying co activity stuff, mm -hmm. um, some planking, side planking. Given his dues, I, f I felt that there was some pressure on the stoma, but, but I felt that was natural because obviously you, you're increasing that pressure within that area nothing was happening the storm wasn't kind of getting any bigger during during those exercises i started to do some lunge work some bulgarian split squats mm -hmm. and again that does increase your inter abdominal pressure but i was trying to counteract that by being very mindful of my movement and breathing and mm -hmm. taking i wasn't weighting it up heavily from my previous training um, habits and doing some bench press again supported doing my breathing exercises making sure that i wasn't overly increasing the inter abdominal pressure however much control over that is so what's inter abdominal pressure inter abdominal pressure is the bracing of the abdominal cavity in order to support your spine in order to support the body to then create a movement so if you look at say for sprinting keeping the the core nice and strong in this in an upright position in order to create that power and drive through the legs both the hips and the arms then this needs to that pressure needs to increase to keep the spine stable so trying to keep the spine stable in certain positions like i said wasn't always in an upright position i wasn't doing any power activities, it was very low level strength stuff. And like I said, everything was going fine. Woke up in the morning, something didn't feel quite right down there, felt a little bit heavier on the stoma. And as soon as I removed uh, the, the colostomy bag, um, I could see that it prolapsed again. Not to the extent of the first one, mm -hmm. however, I could tell it was prolapsed. So essentially, the, where the stoma site is situated in the, the lower abdomen there, instead of it just kind of being out with a little button shape there, um, it was basically the intestine was hanging out and all that. So it was quite worrying that it happened again. Um, quite disconcerting really. <laughs> As the, the problem is, there was no warning sign. Was there a warning sign the first time? Uh, uh, no, the f because of the, fir the first time obviously, it was the, um, the convulsions, being sick. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of caused it to come out. So essentially, I did, I, there was no build up. I was being sick and it happened. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So as soon as I removed, it, was, it was out. Uh, I didn't feel it happening, but that's what, that's what caused it. This time, doing the rehab, again, yes, I felt a little bit of pressure there, but it didn't feel, at the time, nothing was happening. You could check, what she was in the clostrum bag. I was just looking, obviously, there's a little peephole there. You can see what's happening with the stoma, and everything seemed in situ, and, and, and as it should be. And there was no obvious pain. There wasn't a pain. There wasn't something to just tell that gut feeling to say, mm, something doesn't feel quite right down mm -hmm. there. So essentially, I just kept going with what I perceived as light exercise. And then it was the next morning that, Obviously, I realised I'd taken the bag off and, and the, the stoma had prolapsed. Straight away, got onto my surgeon's PA and said, Look, you know, um, could you let him know that the stoma had prolapsed again? Mm -hmm. And to be fair, they were like, Yeah, no problem. Within a week, he was like, Get back in and see me. Checked it out, fine. And it was from March. So that was March, June. So just uh, just under three months, I was having the surgery again, but this time it was bigger surgery in order th for the surgeon to anchor everything down. So unfortunately, I had to be cut open again, incision right through the linear alba here, through the abdominal wall, um, opened that up, cut off the, the other part of the, the, the prolapse. Mm -hmm. So more and more, I'm losing more of my small intestine. So, um, and then that kind of, by opening that up, that gave him greater kind of purchase and, and 
uh, area for him to kind of really anchor it down to the fascia. And touch wood with 12 weeks post-op now. And I'm back into rehab. Not doing the stuff I was doing before. But we're getting somewhere. The, the storm is in the right place. I'm doing a lot of CV. Uh, just for the guys going, like, how has that changed your approach? Or has that confirmed some things for you? And like, what sort of impact has that made to your progress coming back this time? Essentially, we document this purely because the NHS guideline from what we've kind of looked into for post-operative care and rehabilitation following the abdominal surgery is very wishy-washy. Essentially, a lot of people that have this type of surgery, and I'm kind of painting a lot of people that, with the same brush here, is that they won't go back to a very physical and active lifestyle, mm -hmm. it's, especially when you compare to what our job involves and, and the, the stuff that we're actually asked to do. So documenting it m means that I can track everything I'm doing. I know it sounds kind of simple, but I've got the Garmin app, got Map, My Run, all them kind of different apps that you can kind of you kind of monitor what you work with on and, and so forth. By having that, I can put that down in a diary. So everything I've done, it's kind of gone to the Garmin, it's gone to the app, and then I documented that. So I can see a slow, steady progression. Mm -hmm. Whereas last time there was no kind of real progression. It was just, let's try this, let's try that. And essentially that was undoing the surgeon's work and that, that was my downfall. So by having a steady progression and taking that to the physio, the exercise rehab instructor, we can closely monitor what I'm doing. So essentially it gives me guidance and I'm not just going off on a whim and trying something that I shouldn't be doing. And to be fair, that's also kept me motivated and I am seeing a steady progression. What's different from the last time is that I was just trying new things. Like I, said, I wasn't essentially going heavy, I wasn't going hard as mm -hmm. I would have previously done in a gym, but it was trying things that obviously was too much for the body to tolerate. Having a document that we, we spoke about, it's, the NHS guidelines are very vague and it says something along the lines of any kind of post-operative surgery regarding your, your the abdominal or any kind of opening of the abdominal wall when you think about women that had cesarean cesarean exactly yeah. that they, they, they're told to return to some light activity or some light housework after six weeks now without sounding condescending but if you're kind of trying to be different to other people our job in roles or our job um, involves a lot of heavy lifting instructing demonstrating in the gym environment. So essentially, I know that's a level I need to get back to. And if I'm not that I'm competing, but I have a goal for next year, which is to get involved with triathlons now, because I'm trying to change in my my approach to training. For me to kind of build up back to that level, I need to have a different training approach than what general sedentary kind of population would that maybe have had the surgery. When I spoke to the surgeon, he said, look, you know, after the first prolapse, he said, I understand your dilemma here, John, or, you know, your frustration, because he said 90% of my patients would be going back to a sedentary desk-based job and they won't be involved in any kind of active kind of living, active exercise or, or, or sporting clubs. Different for you. Uh -huh. That's a big part of your life. So that's something you need to kind of build up to. But there are no guidelines. So essentially, as we've discussed, document this now. Hopefully this will be some sort of a case study that we can hopefully give to some people and say, look, this worked for this person who wants to return to a high level of activity. So they have some guidelines to follow. You mentioned that you're now training towards doing triathlons and that's kind of changed your approach to training to what you've usually done. Why, why have you selected triathlon and what, what is it about triathlon that's sort of drawn you in? Well, to be fair, I mean, I've never, never, never kind of been interested in triathlon type training. And that's purely because I enjoy the resistance type thing. I enjoy weightlifting, CrossFit type stuff, strength, S&C. Mm -hmm. And I know S&C is heavily involved in, in endurance events now. So the main reason why I've decided to go along the lines of triathlon is because I now still have an opening of the abdominal wall. So when my stoma comes out, that's still an opening. That is still, I, I will be very prone to herniations, to, again to prolapsing. So I have to be very mindful of that, and I suppose therefore that's kind of give me that's give me the the drive to change my channel, the the, the mm -hmm. shift that I needed. That's not to say I won't be resistant to training because essentially that's a big part, like we said, of, of triathlon training. But it means I don't have to go for my single heavy deadlifts or cleans or snatches. I don't have to look for threes or fives in that you know repetition mm -hmm. training. I'm going very heavy. I can focus on muscle endurance type stuff, which is very, you know, the lighter weight um, below your kind of 50% your one rep maxes and build up my strength that way, but still enjoy the, the, the competitive edge. Yeah, exactly that. And there's a lot of my friends and, and including yourself that have gone down the road of, of 
triathlon training and I think well if my focus is going to change and it's not that I need anything like that to motivate myself but it gives me a go mm-hmm. and I said that that's important so my long-term goal and dare I say it on camera is that hopefully next year if I'm lucky enough I would like to get involved or at least try an Ironman so I'm one of those people that if I'm going to do things I don't do them by half and understandably that my dynamics and my body have changed I have to be mindful that there are still hurdles and obstacles that I have to overcome with regards to surgery, not so much the, the, the training part of things. It gives me a huge goal to kind of achieve and I think that will keep me hugely motivated. And like I said, I'm still going to be resistance training, but I'm not going to be putting a huge load onto the abdominal area, mm-hmm. such as if I was deadlifting, if I was like, you know, overhead squatting, that puts a huge load uh, and tension through the abdominal wall. Whereas if I'm on a bike, but if I, whether I'm running or swimming, I think my body should be able to tolerate the thing as long as I build up slowly. Summarize that then, my the main reason is health implications that I'm going down the road. Mm-hmm. However, I've still got a goal to achieve that I can really still push myself and feel like I'm motivated enough to, to complete something that is, you know, quite a huge thing to achieve really in Ironman. I want to do 10B for the obvious reasons, being a Welshman and, and, you know, it's kind of a patriotic kind of thing. And people say, well, it's a bit silly that you want to do something, you know, if you're going to go and do an Ironman, surely you should try a flatter route. And I understand that, I completely understand that. I want to do something, I completely immerse myself into it and I just want to give it my best shot. <laughs> Obviously with the application, I may not be lucky enough to get on, on it next year, but I'm going to give it a best shot. And that's the way my training is going to go. I mean, I've been swimming now. I've actually completed a two-mile swim. So we're almost 12 weeks post-op. I am swum for over a year previous, you know, prior to the op because I wasn't that much into my CV. It'd be more uh, metabolic conditioning, shorter sessions. And I've completed a two-mile swim in about an hour and 15. And that's in the pool. Don't get me wrong. It's a little bit different to open water. But I feel like I'm achieving things and my body's actually kind of showing me that these things can be done. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of keeping me going now, keeping me motivated and actually giving me the more drive to push on and want to do this next year. Over this sort of experience, what's been your biggest learning point? Have you had any aha moments or what's given you the confidence to turn around now and say, look, I, I think I want to go and do an Ironman? I think it all starts from understanding that, I mean I should understand there's an exercise rehab instructor myself I know I know the physiology and how things heal and how we adapt but I didn't give my body a chance like I said I let my kind of heart rule my head last time so the light bulb kind of thing for me this time was I needed to let the body heal and I took that six six to eight weeks of just letting my body heal like I said it was a battle but I let my body heal and I think touch wood everything seems to be going right this time and again that, that's just that's motivation itself that's given me the kind of drive and to say do you know what my body will heal as long as i give it time now let's just start testing the start pushing it a little bit more and we'll gradually build that up don't get me wrong it's not like i'm going from couch to 5k i've got a previous training background um yes it's, my body's been through a lot of surgery and it's had to tolerate a lot but i think as long as the healing has taken place as long as i'm taking things steadily and getting the you know obviously taking advice from the right people i think next year is totally achievable well over the last sort of year we we joined a number of facebook groups yeah one of them being um austin the athletes yeah and how's how's being part of those groups impacted you can know i know there's been positives and there's been negatives because sometimes you've spoken to me about seeing other people who you would maybe consider yourself to be fitter than yeah, yeah. um and they're doing things that you're not or weren't at the time how did that make you feel and what sort of things can <clears> people learn from those well, essentially, that's a double-edged sword, isn't it? It's in a way you're looking at, right? I'm looking at people and thinking, and and it, it sounds very judgmental, but I know what my body was capable uh, was capable of previous to the surgery. Even having a J pouch, I would still be able to kind of step up and do a marathon row. Um, I'd step up and do over a thousand burpees in you know a six-hour. Pe- I could do these type type of challenges, and I know that my mind and my body was capable of that, no matter mm-hmm. what he was going through. So when I see these people, when I see people online and and kudos to them, they're doing amazing things. You know, they've been through huge surgery just like myself and they're dealing with a lot of things day to day, you know, from diet nutrition, from, you know, going to the toilet issues and so forth. And they are achieving great things. They've done, there's people I've seen on there that have done IMF, both women and men. And I think to myself, when I I look at them and I always compare body type and body shape and stuff, and a lot of them have been overweight Mm -hmm. and they've achieved these great things. And I said, well, Actually, I've always kept myself in decent shape. And yes, my body shape has changed a little now because I'm looking a lot leaner because I'm not doing the resistance types. I'm not doing the body. And I look at them and go, well, if this person can do it, then surely I can do it. 
and they may have not been through as much surgery so they may have only had a few surgical procedures and they are where they are but I've had I think it's about seven now I'm quite big ops but I, I still think that my body is still capable of doing this and the reason I say double-edged sword is because one I think oh, if they can do it I can do it and essentially I could be pushing my two self to do something that actually my body isn't quite ready for and I should be giving myself maybe over a year not just a year to kind of go from surgery to you know an iron man maybe two year period so it's 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 a hugely motivational thing but it also could be the undoing of, of, of me you know by looking at someone else and thinking oh I can do what they do I can do better than what they do so sometimes you just have to think about your own state and yeah. I actually sometimes have to bring myself back and go I don't fully understand what they've been through and and it's a, to be fair going back it's a great group to be part of because people openly share what they've been through mm -hmm. so you can see exactly you know you can see what sir they've been through you can see what they're actually achieving day to day so it gives you a lot of perspective and actually gives you a lot of advice you think oh i could use that when they're talking about different drinks that they take on as in the rehydration drinks are they talking about the different mileage they've done and the pace so there's a lot of information on there that you can actually that can help people to do things that they actually maybe thought they were incapable of mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things i've just thrown in there but essentially like i said it's it's given me motivation to push on i think i can do better but well, not do better but i can do more than what your body might be telling you but then i've got to be very very mindful of that i could be undoing a lot of work by trying to push myself too quickly yeah so i think like, being part of the social scene within the disease so joining the different Crohn's colitis and also the colitis websites and ostomy athlete stuff yeah it's give you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of camaraderie for being yeah. amongst a group of people that have similar interests and also similar uh, chronic diseases. Yeah. But just to be aware of also the social impact of comparing yourself to them as well. So it's like yeah. allowing them to exist in their own right with their own impacts that are affecting them and how they perform. Yeah. And understanding that you have yeah. your own impacts and as much as you use them for inspiration it's it's realizing that you're only racing against yourself and listening to yeah. your own body it's um, a great support network really mm -hmm. it really is but like i said it can have the implications where you're comparing and a lot of social media we compare our lives to someone else's life or we compare you know what we're capable of with it. and actually sometimes it's not the real world but it's such a good good group you can get so much from from mm -hmm. the ostomy athletes where, uh, hit the like button Hit that little bell icon because we're going to be uploading quite regularly and it'd be nice for you to get a little buzz in your pocket whenever we upload. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.